Wow. You look fabulous. Wow. Amazing. Oh, my, my eyes are just burning because, wow, it's just amazing. Now, you may say, amazing? Fashion? I know. I, I'm, a, I'm a victim of the fashion police. And uh, yes, I, 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 I know I'm fully aware of that. And uh, sometime they're going to come and they're going to arrest me. And then that's going to be, you know, the end of my time. I'm going to be going and spending time in fashion jail. But you know what? I don't care. I wear what makes me comfortable. So today we're going to talk, start talking about the clothes that we wear and the things that we put to make ourselves noticeable. And let's get started. This is lesson 25 from our book, uh, Speak Now To. This is GBS Beginner English. Let's get started. So today we're going to start off. What are some of the clothes that you usually wear? What are you wearing right now? Are the clothes that you wear different from day to day? Do you have particular clothes that you enjoy wearing? What about seasonal clothes? For example, some people enjoy wearing suits. Uh, I personally don't enjoy wearing suits. I find them a little bit too restrictive. Don't mind wearing jackets and I like wearing slacks, but I usually prefer wearing jeans. But my jeans right now, uh, they've got a big hole in them and I've uh, not had enough time to repair them. So I'm going to have to work on that. But what is it that makes you comfortable? What are the things that you usually wear? Some people wear different things. Think about your shoes. What kind of shoes do you like to wear? Now, I used to wear uh, my Merrill shoes all the time, and I'm going to probably start wearing them more and more frequently. But I've been wearing my Crocs lately because Crocs to me are very comfortable on my feet, and they keep me uh, very cool, and my feet are almost always hot. And uh, if you've ever get a chance to meet my wife or my dogs, they always come up and cuddle next to my feet because they're like, Jerry, your feet are always hot. I'm like, I know, my father's feet are hot too. So what is it that you wear? What kind of clothes do you usually prefer? And some people like to wear things that are different. Some people like wearing very fancy and dressy clothes, and some people like wearing very casual and uh, plain clothes. This is all your style. So think about that. What do you like to wear and what makes you feel comfortable? Now we're going to listen to a conversation about between Susan and Callum and they're going to be talking about some traditional clothes and what people tend to wear in their culture. So let's take a listen and see what they have. We'll talk on the other side. The music is great and I love your clothes. Are they traditional? Oh, yes. You probably know this. It's called a kilt. Yeah, I've seen them in pictures. Is it a kind of skirt? Well, Scottish men don't really call it a skirt. People usually wear it on special occasions. I see. I love the pattern. The pattern is plaid. Scotland is famous for them. The pattern can tell you what family someone is from. How interesting. Is there a traditional outfit for women as well? Yes. Women normally wear longer skirts, but when they dance, they may wear kilts. I think there will be a women's dance performance later. Okay, so he talks about the different things that people wear, and he is wearing a, skill, uh, a, a, a kilt, and he's wearing most of the traditional uh, garb. The kilt can uh, be worn so that it comes up over your shoulder. And he's right that it does usually distinguish what family you are a part of. Now, if you've seen the movie Braveheart, this is one of the things they actually get very wrong in that movie, is that kilts are not actually that old. Kilts have only been around for about 300 years to distinguish families. But parts of their clothes, they've always been around. It's part of their dress and part of their way. Now, the kilt, um, if you actually get a chance to see someone fold the kilt to put it on, kilts are long pieces of cloth. For a normal-sized person, one kilt will probably be um, about 20 meters of cloth. 
and you say 20 meters of cloth? Well, maybe not 20 meters, but it's still a sizable and long piece of cloth, maybe five meters of cloth for a single kilt. But learning how to fold it so that it, it uh, uh, rests on your body correctly is part of the art of wearing a kilt. Um, but it's a very traditional uh, outfit for people from Scotland. And he's right that uh, women do wear them for special events. And they're talking about the music being great. I'm not sure if they're listening to Scottish music. If they are, they're probably listening to bagpipes. And bagpipes are one of those instruments you either love them or you hate them. There is nobody in the middle that says, well, bagpipes, well, they're just okay. They're not bad. They're, they're okay. You, know, you either love them or you hate them. I personally, I like the sound of bagpipes. I think they're a very uh, pleasant instrument to listen to, but not everybody likes them. All right, listen again and add the extra sentences that they talk about. The music is great, and I love your clothes. Are they traditional? Oh, yes. You probably know this. It's called a kilt. Have you heard of it? Yeah, I've seen them in pictures. Is it a kind of skirt? Well, Scottish men don't really call it a skirt. People usually wear it on special occasions. They don't wear it every day. I see. I love the pattern. The pattern is plaid. Scotland is famous for them. The pattern can tell you what family someone is from. How interesting. Is there a traditional outfit for women as well? Yes. Women normally wear longer skirts, but when they dance, they may wear kilts. I think there will be a women's dance performance later. Okay. So now, one of the things that's always kind of a fun joke uh, if you ever meet somebody from Scotland is the joke asks, what do you wear under a kilt? And to this day, I've never met someone who actually wears a kilt who's willing to tell me what they wear under there. Um, I've been, I've discovered what they wear underneath the kilt. And it's one of those mysteries that when you know, keep it to yourself. But until then, it's a mystery that's fun. Well, I'm not gonna say fun. Interesting to discover. Interesting. Uh, interesting is a better word for it. Not fun. All right. So now, let's look at noticing some things about general behavior. Asking about general things. Now, when you generalize, you're trying to say something about a large group. Now, I generally uh, generalize. I try to discourage my students from making generalizations because it can lead to problems when you overgeneralize something. For example, here in Korea, a lot of uh, food is based around kimchi. And to say, oh, all Koreans eat kimchi. Uh, not all, many do, most in fact, but not all. There are always exceptions. Oh, Korean people eat dogs. Some people do, but not all. These are generalizations. When you make a generalization, you're talking about a big group. And a generalization works because it is true usually, but not always. To say that all Americans are fat and ugly, it's true for some but not all. So that's where you got to be very careful when you make a generalization. Um, talking about what people wear. If it's talking about you specifically, I generally wear uh, a, a, a shirt with a collar and some kind of jacket. That's generally what I wear and wear slacks. That's my general appearance. I also generally wear solid colors. I very rarely wear any kind of pattern or anything that's uh, more than one color. I do occasionally, 
but not too often. So this is where a generalization, if it's made about you, you can make it all you want. But when you talk about a culture or you talk about someone else, be very careful because there's a point where it's a generalization and racism. And you don't want to cross that line. So it's a good idea. Avoid generalizations unless it's something very, very general. Like saying Korean people are famous for making kimchi. Not all people, but as a whole, Korean people make kimchi. Korean custom, Koreans wear hanboks to special occasions. Not all Koreans but most do. So this is a generalization, but make sure to qualify it to make sure that it's not a racist statement. For example, here's one that, that uh, borderlines on racism. I'm only using it as an example, but this is just an example. Hip hop music is favored by people who are generally colored. It's not true, but more often than not, it would be a general statement that could be true. I don't believe that. I have friends who love hip hop of every color, of every nationality. But the generalization, it's used to express an opinion. It's not my opinion. It's just used as an example. Describing general behavior, as I said, be very, very careful. Unless you're talking about yourself or what people that you know do, be very careful with it um, because it can, as I said with the hip hop example, it can lead to racism and you don't want to go into there. So be very, very careful with generalizing. All right, now we're going to listen to the next part and we're going to listen to them pronounce things. Now, when you make a list, our voices tend to go up, up, down. And you can make your list as long as you want, but it just tends to go this way. Page 63. Pronunciation. A. Listen and practice. Notice the intonation when we say a series of things. 1. Men wear slacks, a shirt, and a tie. 2. Women tend to wear a blouse, a skirt, and a jacket. Okay, now these are both good generalizations, and they are correct. But they're also forgetting things that you could add into this list. They could also say, men wear slacks, a t-shirt, a shirt, underwear, socks, and a tie. That would be more correct. Not all men wear socks. Not all men wear underwear. But adding it to the list, it becomes more specific. So be careful and make sure that you're including those things because uh, if you're making a list, often people forget the simple things like underwear, socks, bras. Those things tend to get forgotten on lists, but they're what people wear. So just be careful with that. Now, there are special days that we all have in our life. Um, here in Korea, traditional days with Chuseok or Solnal, you may have a day where you're wearing something special. You may go out and put on a hanbok and wear a special thing. Or on your wedding day, you may wear a, uh, a wedding gown or a tuxedo. There are certain outfits that people tend to wear and they wear them for special occasions. Just be careful of them. Uh, one of the things that people wear specifically for graduation, uh, in this picture, you have the young lady wearing a cap and gown. Now, a cap and gown, it's a mortarboard hat. That's that special hat there. And it usually, in the past, indicated somebody who was educated. In the distant past, teachers used to wear mortarboards when they would teach. It indicated that they were a teacher. It was a teacher's hat. But it's also 
now used when you graduate, excuse me, graduate. And there's a tradition of the tassel. Now, you can see in this picture, her tassel is on the right-hand side. That means that she has already graduated. Before you graduate, your tassel usually is on the left side. And after you cross the stage, after you receive your uh, diploma from the dean or the president or whoever's giving it to you, you adjust the tassel to the opposite side. And that's for when you graduate from high school or graduate from university with your bachelor's degree. When you graduate with your master's degree, they give you what's called a cowl. The cowl is draped around your neck, and it signifies that you have got higher education. Now, when you go from uh, your master's degree to getting your doctoral degree, then you get your robe with stripes. And it's usually in the color of your alma mater. Your alma mater is the school that you graduate. Now, all of you are students at Sun Chengyang University. Well, if you're watching me on the internet, you might be from a different university or a different school, but all of my students are from Sun Chengyang University. So your alma mater is Sun Chengyang University. The colors of Sun Chengyang, the blues and the greens, that would be what your um, original degree is in. If you get your master's degree there, your cowl, will reflect the colors from your school. Your master's, your doctoral degree will reflect where you get your degree from. So my master's degree is from the American College of Education. So my cowl would be uh, white, blue, and green because that's the colors of my university. Sam Houston State University, the colors are orange and white. So for my cap and gown, it would become black because that's traditional for college but the cowl would reflect the American College of Education. And then when you get your doctoral degree, your robes would then reflect what university you graduated from. Now, let's talk a little bit about fashion and do that in our favorite place. Let's go into workbook time. All right, so these are the different clothes. What are the things that you would wear on the top part of your body? And what would you wear on the bottom part of your body? Now, some of these could be both like a uniform. You could wear the uniform for top, uniforms for bottoms. You have both of them. But some things are only for one place. Like you only wear jeans on your legs. Unless you're really strange, you like to walk around on your hands and wear your clothes on your top of your body, then you might wear them on your the top of your body. It's up to you. I mean, I'm not going to judge, but uh, this may be um, something that's special. Then I want you to add three more kinds of clothes. Look at the list and then add some more things that you actually wear. Uh, your different clothes, the different things that you have, because you could have something special. Now, what is it? Looking at part one, what are the things that you do wear? What are the things that uh, no, God. you may not want to wear, ever wear this? No, God, please, no. Well, no. hey, it's a special no. occasion. You got to wear it. No. Yes. Okay. There are some things that people say, okay, you have to wear it. Um, one that's a not a requirement at least it's not a requirement anymore but it is a tradition is that when you go to a funeral you should wear black um you don't have to you can wear whatever clothes you want but usually black is a the term is somber s-o-m-b-e-r it's a somber color that you usually wear because you're grieving now Grieving colors can be different from culture to culture. Here in Korea, white traditionally has been the color worn while people are grieving. But in the Western tradition, people usually wear black. So it can be whatever color you wear for, for that kind of event. Go with that. Now, a little bit of trivia for you. People haven't always worn white dresses to a wedding. 
And hint, hint, this is going to be a quiz question. Who was the first person to actually wear a white wedding dress and that after her dress, everybody else has tried copying her? Uh, this woman, when she wore her white dress, she wanted to make her wedding as simple as possible. So she picked white because that was the simplest color. And at that time, before her, people wore elaborate colors if they could. If they were rich, you wore an expensive dress. If you were poor, you just wore your cleanest clothes. But after this woman wore a white dress on her wedding day, everyone in the world wanted to copy her style. You don't have to wear a white wedding dress. Because of her, it became a tradition. And this tradition is not that old. It's not a tradition that goes back hundreds and hundreds of years. This tradition only goes back about 150 years uh, to the wedding of Queen Victoria of England. During her wedding, she was the first one to wear a white, dread, white wedding dress on her wedding day. And because of that and the invention of photography at the time, because this was early in the days of photography, because of that, many people decided white was the color that we should wear for wedding days. It's not. You can wear whatever color dress makes you happy. So this is just traditions. Why do men wear tuxedos? Again, same thing. Prince Albert, Queen Victoria's husband, wore a tuxedo for his wedding. He didn't wear a uniform. He wore a tuxedo. He was a soldier, and he could have worn his, his uniform to get married in. And a lot of people who are in the military, they do wear their, tux their uniform to get married in. But it's what you are comfortable in. So that's traditions and fun things. All right, moving on. Brazilian fashion designer. Now I'm going to read this, and I want you to write down the answers in the uh, blanks provided. So Brazilian fashion designer. Two Brazilian cities have joined the list of top 25 fashion capitals, Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo. However, one designer from Brazil has been making a name for himself for a while. Carlos Miel designs beautiful dresses for actresses and singers, including Beyonce, Sandra Bullock, Alicia Keys, Kira Knightley. And he also makes a line of jeans. He has offices in Rio and in New York. Miel started his career as an artist. He also thought about becoming a film director. He is interested in how things look and move. He likes both modern and traditional clothing. In his designs, Miel uses traditions that come from all areas of Brazilian culture. For example, he uses hand-sewn stitches and leather work in his expensive dresses. His clients, like Beyonce, wear his dresses on special occasions such as the Oscars or music award shows. So his fashions are very popular around the world and not everybody can afford them, but if you've got the money, hey, you might look like a million dollars, and that may be what it costs you to wear one of his dresses. All right, so fashion designers. What other fashion designers do you know in the world? Um, if you've seen the movie Devil Wears Prada, you can see what a fashion designer and fashion magazine might look like. But here's the strange thing. Actually go look some of the fashion designers of the world. Look them up. You may be surprised to see what some of them look like, especially the lady that the Devil Wears Prada is based on, the, um, the lady that runs Vogue magazine. Go take a look at her. She's an older lady, and to say she's a little bit different would be an understatement, but Hey, she thinks she's the cat meow. She thinks she is number one. But hey, whatever works for you. If it's comfortable and you're happy wearing it, then I am all great for you and enjoying it for you.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to that favorite time again. Yeah, that's right. Make sure that you give an example of what kind of clothes you like to wear. You don't have to include a picture, but if you want to say, this is the kind of style that I have, this is what I like, that would be great, but you don't have to. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. We've come to the end of another lesson, and this is week, uh, week 11. This is video number four. This is the last one for this week. Oh, come to the end. So have a good time, have a great day, and I'll see you in class.